Now, a book on the life of one of the West Country's most successful authors has just been published. Sir Terry Pratchett, who lived in Wiltshire, sold millions of copies of his fantasy fiction. In a moment, I'll be talking to his biographer. But first, David has been looking back at Sir Terry's achievements. Terry Pratchett, a West Country man in possession of an extraordinary mind that created a fictional planet called Discworld. Here on Earth, his talents made him a knight of the realm. I'm a, a writer of fantasy fiction, and I think it's quite nice that a writer of fantasy fiction has been honoured in this way, because although it's a very popular genre, I think it, it trails a poor second, shall we say, to crime writing. His books, mixing fantasy, comedy and wisdom, sold in their millions, taking readers to another universe and earning him legions of fans. Sometimes they dressed as the characters and converged on Wynne Canton in Somerset, where a shop celebrates his work. Indeed, the town unofficially twinned with his fictional location, Ankh-Morpork. Pork. Terry Pratchett left school at 17 to become a journalist, but after a stint with the Western Daily Press, he became a press officer for the West Country's nuclear power stations, just as America experienced its worst radiation accident. He called it his unerring sense of timing. By the 1980s, his book sales were really taking off and he was soon Britain's best-selling author. At his home near Salisbury, surrounded by his beloved computers and screens, he produced a huge volume of work. But one day, his fingers couldn't find the right keys. His brain was under attack from a rare form of Alzheimer's and another chapter opened in his story his campaign for assisted dying. What better rather than spend some time in a hospice or a hospital to die quietly by arrangement in your own home, if at all possible? And in my case, when that moment comes, as inevitably it will, as it comes to all of us, possibly with a glass of brandy in my hand, uh, listening to Thomas Tallis on my iPod because although I am an atheist, Thomas Tallis's music will take you a little bit closer to heaven. He made huge personal donations to Alzheimer's research. It's a nasty disease. It's surrounded by shadows and small, largely unseen tragedies. And went to Downing Street calling for dementia to be talked about. There's a kind of air of witchcraft and superstition about Alzheimer's, just as there used to be about um, cancer. But as soon as cancer was talked about, the battle against cancer was, was joined. And I hope the same thing is now happening for Alzheimer's. It really is a horrible disease, and it's the most feared disease by people over the age of 50. In 2015, Sir Terry died at home of natural causes at the age of only 66, and his last book was published after his death. Some fans keep his last novel unread on their shelves. No one is actually dead, he said, until the ripples of what they have done in this life die away. Nice reminder of an incredible life, wasn't it, by David there? Now, Mark Burroughs is a comedian and journalist who has written the first ever full biography of Sir Terry. A little earlier, I asked him when he became a fan. Uh, 1992, uh, which gives away my age a little bit. I was 12 years old. My parents were given two Pratchett books, The Colour of Magic and Guards Guards by, appropriately, a bloke down the pub. And uh, they passed them on to me because exactly the sort of weird nonsense I like. And both those books have swearing in the first few pages. And when you're 12 years old, that's hilarious. But I was completely hooked, completely entranced. And uh, and I've been reading them insatiably ever since. Um, did you ever get to meet him? I didn't. And it is a source of eternal regret that I talk about in the book, actually. I, I could have met him about 10 years ago at a friend's uh, radio recording. I decided not to because I can't remember why and I will never forgive myself. Uh, but 10 years later, I don't know. And it turns out they all got drunk in the pub afterwards and had a wonderful old time and I missed the chance of meeting him. And after that, 
queuing up for a book signing just didn't seem quite the same thing. Uh, I kind of saw writing the book as my chance to meet him. That was one of the reasons I wanted to do it. Yeah, I was going to say that probably would. And I'm so sorry I asked that because I really feel your pain now uh, that you didn't get to meet him. But at least now you've done the first ever biography. Um, so what were some of the favourite stories that you found and how did you find them? Uh, the best stuff I found was the stuff that isn't particularly well known. Like, um, I interviewed a lot of Terry's colleagues that worked with him in the 70s and the 60s at newspapers at the, the Bath Evening Chronicle and the Western Daily Press and places like that. My favourite story that I found out was the uh, the time he worked at the Western Daily Press working for an editor called Eric Price, who was a uh, monstrous, terrifying man who bullied and shouted, but got results. And uh, Terry couldn't stand that. He was very, very uh, against the way he saw people being treated so he decided to stand up for himself he decided he was going to say something uh, he screwed himself up the editor came storming in through the doors to the newsroom terry got up to say his piece and promptly fainted dead on the spot so that's my favorite uh, story that i found <laughs> moving forwards what do you hope that people will take from your exploration of his life i'm hoping it gives his work a lot more context uh I think when you know some of this background it makes the book so much richer uh, also you appreciate how much of a storyteller he was, and that's very much a theme in the book, how uh, how brilliantly he kind of scripted his own life into these little nuggets, these little stories, and, and they're gems. And uh, I think the more you know about his past, the, um, the more it sort of deepens and enriches the work. Mm. Well, Mark, very best of luck with the sales of the book, and congratulations on writing it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Oh, really enjoyed talking to Mark Burrow. Really nice. His book, by the way, The Magic of Terry Pratchett, is out now for those of you who are interested. Now, it's been a funny old...